What's up, all you sexy nerds? Grizzly McBee here. You are listening and watching Nerds New Sexy Entertainment. And this is podcast number 117. Today, I am joined by the one and only... Wildfire One. What's up, everybody? And I'm also joined by... Beta Girl Jim. Let's see, before we get into today's episode, and what the topic actually is, uh... Baby girl, doing what you're wearing over there? A t-shirt. Where'd you get it? From the store online. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we are finally selling merchandise. We have shirts, and uh, I believe we have something else, don't we, baby girl? We do. We have hats. We have hats. Hats. Say nerdy hats, and on the back, always it says always. Just so you guys so know, we've got we've got several different styles of hats. We have several different styles of shirts. All say the same thing. Stay nerdy always, because that's us. That's, that's our slogan. Do. That's what we say and do and stuff. So, uh, wild. What are we talking about today? Oh, I thought we just, uh, you know, chit-chat. How was your day? Oh, well, it wasn't too bad. You know, some strange things been happening. There's though. always some strange... You know, but there's always stranger things. Uh, that's right. <laughs> and that's I what like we're talking about. I like how you did that segue there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about stranger things. There's been, what, three seasons? The last season just dropped. Uh, no, there's been three chapters. Oh, okay. Grizz... How did you find out about Stranger Things? Okay, so there's this asshole I know, right? And <laughs> I think I know him too. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he may be uh, the other guy in this <laughs> podcast. I'm not going to drop any names, but he's the one that uh, doesn't look as good as me. True? <laughs> <laughs> How, like you were saying, who's the asshole that got you into it? You. Yes. I got I, and the thing is, is I wanted him to kind of do a quick review on the first two seasons. And I'm like, Grizz, watch this. I got told you binge watched it faster than. Yes. Well, yeah, that's because I binge watched both chapters in two days. I told you to watch it, and you watched. And I think you went into it not knowing what you're getting into. You went into it not. Yeah, I I I, I knew nothing about it. Um, I got like, I don't know, half of first season in. Uh, and called Wild and called him a piece of shit. Actually, I kind of know why he called me a piece of shit because he got so into it he couldn't go to sleep, right? Yeah, yeah, I I couldn't wow. put it down. He he, uh, it wasn't that scary was, for that him. Was the same with uh, Castlevania on Netflix. Yeah, that was the same with Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, there's been I don't know nine or ten different things on Netflix that. Wilds called me up and would be like, hey, I want you to do a review on this. Like, okay, well, when do you want the review done? I don't know, give it to me by the end of the week. Okay. Well, then I call him like 20 minutes later. You realize there's like eight seasons of this, right? Oh, you can do it. Because I knew you'd yeah. get addicted. I knew you'd, you would binge watch the fuck out of it. There, there was points where, like, I had people telling me that I needed to start doing drugs or something that way I could put my phone down. Jesus. <laughs> All I was doing was just watching Stranger Things. So baby girl, how long did it take you to watch Stranger Things? Three weeks. Give yeah. or take. I had issues watching it at night in the dark in a house by myself. It really kind doing it in the middle of BFE. He, uh, by yourself. She yeah. got really freaked out no. by it. She's like, this, she's all this. She she texts me. This is really scary. I'm like, yeah, I can see how it is, and it is a scary show. You know, it's not really that it's scary. It's suspense. I don't do I don't do good with suspense because it tends to give me a heart attack. It gets my heart beating so fast that I feel like I'm having a heart attack. Like walking around doing my rounds at work. Cause that's mm -hmm. where I watched it. We, we have a lot of stray cats out there, and they'll like jump out of the bushes whenever yeah, I walk no. by. Yeah, no. So I'm like, hey, fuck you, Demi Gorgon, you get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I I was on edge for probably a good two weeks. It is. Yeah. It's it's like, very it's a very anxiety building show. That's how you know it's a good 
show. So let's start out with with what this show's about. Like it's basically surrounded by what it, it's bas- it basically surrounds uh, a bunch of kids in the eighties, which it, in er, the early the 80s. early eighties. Which if you think about it, how how interesting is that? I mean, if you haven't grown up in the eighties like some of us, uh, how interesting is that? But honestly, the way they did it in the first episode, and I said this on my Facebook page, I think even on Twitter. You can't go wrong when you start a fucking episode with D and D. You just right? can't. You just can't. The, these kids are all in a circle and they're playing Dungeons and that, Dragons. See, that's how Wild hooked me. He didn't even tell me even that. He's just like, you got to watch the show. Yeah, He's but like, you liked me... it, didn't you? No, I did. You I both did, liked did it, like didn't it. you? We did. I did. I, I, I told it. you. Fucking I welcome. Like watching it. So it starts out. Bunch of kids playing D and D. Maybe that else. Because I know what will gets taken. The little boy. Yeah. He yeah. Will. 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 He gets taken to the upside down world. But so we first see the demi gorgon, which those things are like, their heads open up and it looks like a big flower. No, it might be Dustin. It ate his cat. <laughs> which that was season two, and that was hilarious. And that was a demi dog that ate his cat. <laughs> demi dog. That was probably one of my favorite fucking lines. If you haven't watched Stranger Things, if for any other reason, you need to watch for Dustin. Dustin is hilarious. Yeah, he's probably one of the now, better see, characters. Th- this is why it. I got so into it because I grew up with a guy named Dustin. Well, and for those of you that don't know, my name's William. So it there was that bit of connection there. Yeah, he had, had uh, kind of like some childhood they, shit going on there. Kind of reminiscing a bit from back in the day. I mean, all the characters I mean, have their own, actually have their own like style and their their own beauty. Like yeah, you know, so yeah. And, but Dustin, he's like that nerd that we can that I, at least a lot of us can connect with and and kind of go like, hey, he reminds me of me when I was a kid. He is the goo. He is the booger of this younger generation. Yes, he's the yeah the the because nerd. for for yeah. for us when we were that age, booger was a god. The way they act together, you could it really they act like they you believe they're friends. Chemistry, the chemistry they like have, the, like they actually grew up together. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they kind of did. Well, I in mean, the for, show, <laughs> for, in the show, for at least at least a few years, yeah. I uh, mean, you think about it, you you know they're what twelve? They're about 13. teenagers now. They're you know so they've well, kind of now yeah now not when well, it no, started. No, but I'm saying like when it first started, you think about it. They were what eight? I mean, that's their whole life. They that's all they know. Well, it's just them. a few years, that's... and that's. But it's it's again it's the show's based in the '80s, and there's so much like you got you got the parents who's a big part of it. Um, shit, what's the what's the car- what's the actor who plays Will's mom? Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder. Yeah. You want to talk about '80s nostalgia? You know, right? You want to talk uh, about '80s nostalgia? Let's see. Let's even talk about Sean Austin, Austin who appears in season Sean two. Austin. Yeah, he you know? was one of the big, big, big goonies. That's yeah. what, honestly, when you when you told me to watch this and I seen Winona Ryder, I was like, oh wow. One, I was shocked that she was playing a mom. Well, we always because, seen her as a young lady. Like we, she's well, at that yeah. age now. Girl interrupted. No, but I mean, she was always like this messed up teenager. She always played that really fucked up person. She's and, kind of <laughs> fucked up as a as as a mom too. At least in the first season. Okay, so majority of chapter one is uh, this girl. Um, we won't give her a name. Let's go ahead and just call her Eleven or L for short. Um, escapes from this test subject test subject facility yeah. and uh, runs into uh, one of the best characters in the show hands down uh, the town drunk also known as town sheriff <laughs> <laughs> and Hopper he kind of takes her under his wing uh, to protect her to try to find her parents until later on 
down the road, they find out that uh, this semi-quasi-government organization is trying to put her back in captivity, put her back in a cage so that they can use her mind abilities to attack the Russians or some shit. She's got some sort of like telepathic ability where she can move things, basically track people. In, in doing all that, she gets to meet the group of guys. Lucas, Mike, Dustin. It's yeah. hard to remember Will because Will's not there for most of that season. He he pulls a poltergeist he, and goes into the... Yeah, he, he's, he's gone for half of uh, chapter one. And of course... Because uh, he's in the... He's in the upside down with and, the Demigorgon. And he's talking to his mom with like Christmas lights and shit. I remember that. Yeah, that do like straight SOS status. Yeah, what were you gonna say, baby girl? You look very uh Well no, that's like that's what I was saying, like I waited for third season for what the fuck is she gonna do? Because there was Christmas lights on season one. Mm-hmm. Then there was a fucking map of papers on season two. Season two. And then on season three, I was like, well, where's the crazy house thing? Like, what, what's, what's going to happen with that? The crazy house thing in what's... season three was... Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Was they moved. The, well, yeah, but I mean, that's not... But well, uh, another... This, since we're on the topic of spoiler alerts, the way that season three ends, it leads you to believe that Hopper dies in an explosion. But my theory, along with everybody else that watched this damn show... Especially if you watched all the way to to past the credits. Yeah, if you watch past the credits, then you will know that it doesn't say he's alive, but he's in Russia in a cage. Throughout, Throughout all of season three, the one Russian that's chasing them keeps calling him the American. And at the yes, very I end of season the three, freaking time. and the very end of season three, after the death, of whatever happens, and let's put it this way, Hopper, Hop, he's between, he's between an area that's going to explode. So, the other side is, is the, the portal. portal to the upside down. So if well, you're going to die, what are you going to do? You're going to sit there and be like, I'm going to die. Are you going to fucking go through that portal like L did in season two? I think that's what he did. I seriously do because, because I think he ran through that portal. Got snatched up by the fucking Russians mm-hmm. and got <laughs> taken to Russia and put in a fucking uh, in, a, in a holding cell. I think so too, and I think that that's what happened. I mean, who else? Like I said, all of season three, they've been referring to him as the American, and that's all they said was they they called him the American the whole like and that's how we knew they were talking about that character. So of course, mm-hmm. so when they say that at the end of the and they they I mean, there's a damn demi dog. You know they got a demi dog, so they obviously in have Russia. A, in Russia. Yeah. So they obviously they're, obviously they're, they're, have access to the upside down. This chapter four comes around, and L is going to come back to town with Will. Oh, she because, also lost her powers. Yeah, but I'm supposed to say she has no powers. Well, she'll get them back. Yeah, she'll get them back. But, okay, but you notice she didn't lose her Don't powers. Don't ruin this for me. She lost her powers when they took that thing out of her leg. Yeah, because it was eating her powers. That's what I think. I think it was just... It, it, was, it, was, it was killing her. It was Yeah, it was, well, it was taken away. I think that was the whole point of it, because the uh, in Season 3, the bad, the main bad guy was a part of the... Uh, so Season 1 was the Demigorgon. We'll just say that. Okay, the Demigorgon. Yeah. The Season 2 was the Demidogs and, and the, uh, the Mind Flare. The Mind Flare. Which was that big fucking creepy looking fucking thing that we barely got to see in season three was that little piece of the mind flare that possessed will in season two that got out and then the damn and then fucking russians opened up another portal and it could control the uh that little bit and piece the, yeah that little bit that little bit of that darkness that was still on this side and it went into Poor people and controlled Billy. them oh Poor oh let's Billy. talk let's talk about that billy was a very good redemption story Okay, Billy I was... think that Billy had, had the best redemption story of any show, not counting, not counting Game of Thrones. Thrones. Billy was introduced to us in season two, and he was the bully. There was a there was a bully in season one who ended up being a good guy, and 
Billy was the bull, more bullier bully, who basically out bully. bullied the bully. Yeah. <laughs> out bullied the bully. Down, boned down on everybody's mom. Yeah. Who was it that I was talking to? I know it was one of you guys that said that that character reminds you of of Michael from the Lost Boys movie. Because he does. He looks just oh, like yeah. that motherfucker. Oh, it was yeah. Baby Girl of Doom. I was talking to her. She said that. Yeah, oh, you yeah. get that. I was like, oh my god. What, it... Billy was basically the bully. He's He had a younger sister named Max. In season two, we get to see like he's the build, more bullier bully. And we get to kind of meet him in season three. It introduces him like he's still a bully, but he's kind of doing his own thing. He's got a, he's getting a job, and he's trying getting ready to bone down on a married he's chick. He's a super playboy. Yeah, super playboy. a All lot these, of married. Yeah, chicks. yeah, and he got more and or then less possessed. Taken, and then started taking people there yeah. against their will. And they got possessed as well. And that it was really good um, as far as that goes. I think that I think season three. And this is what I think I like the most about uh, Stranger Things is that the plot makes sense. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Like the first, the and it makes sense to nerdy. It basically reaches out and says, "Hey, nerds, get you know." They use D and D references. They use, you know, the Demi Gorgon, the Demi Dog, the fucking Mind Flare. They were, they were, yeah. They're, they're even fighting them like it was a D and D. Here's an interesting, an interesting fact for you. You guys recognize the two like guys that that uh, uh, that worked at the paper. There was the there was the one guy the the boss and then there was that little blonde guy. Yeah, the real dick. No. Yeah, the real dick. Does he look familiar to you? That's Gary Busey's son. Oh shit. Okay. It looks just fucking like him too. He reminded me of Biff from Back to the Future. I can see where you're getting that from, but it's yeah, it's Gary Busey's son. I seen. Uh, he he used he also was in the uh, Netflix original series for. Uh, oh shit! That was a vampire movie. I can't remember. Uh, Dust till dawn from dusk till fucking dawn. I God just damn it. it. <laughs> so okay, so uh, I I was even gonna say dusk till dawn. I was like, no way. That I kept thinking. Right. Uh, the only thing that came to my head was Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight. I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> so I did not watch that movie. Dust till dawn. <laughs> fucking. Uh, there you go. I'm just trying to make a goddamn point. And I'm having trouble with words. <laughs> All the actors. I think honestly. All the actors in this show deserve a fucking clap. They're they're so oh, good. Oh, definitely. Uh, Sean Sean Austin, like his character, he played Bob, and Bob was like, you you watch him and you're like, that's 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 his Goonies character grown up more or less. He looks so yeah. fucking cool, like, and he's 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 this nerdy guy that's that's trying to impress like Renata Ryder and her son. And quick side note, give me that, give me that here, side note. Here they might be making a Goonies too. They've been saying that for years. The writers did a perfect job with Matt. Oh, yeah. Because she played the part of a ginger like a ginger should, with no fucking soul, and did her best Especially in to season turn three. L on Mike because he said one little lie that didn't hurt her, so that she didn't get hurt, and then fucking soulless ginger... But- Turn Mike into a fucking demon. <laughs> but that's that's I, that could even be. Why are you hating the ginger? But that could also be like a female thing, because you seen how you seen how quickly has... L just went like fuck it, men, fuck all men. It's a, it's a yeah, but gingers have a way of sucking shit out of you. But see, I was like Max when I was younger. Don't don't hate the redheads. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> but in all, in, in, in all honesty, as well, the boys were fucking up too. They were all fucking up. Everyone was yeah. fucking up. At one they point. were all fucking up. The, 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 girls were messing see, up. season one was all about friendship. Okay, it was all about like friendship Friends and getting don't well back. Lie. And no one and no one leaves anyone behind. Season two was about the same thing, but there. Were, season three was all about relationship. Season three was all was basically like the the end season of Friends. Everyone was dating yeah. everyone else except for Will, who and just wanted was... to play D and D. Will just wanted to play D and D. I always was... just want to fucking play D and D. No, that's like wants yeah, to play. like like that's me as well. Like I want to play D and D, and everyone's like trying to kiss on someone. I want to. D- <laughs> it's the never-ending story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's talk about that. That's season three. Dustin finds a girlfriend, and no one sees this girlfriend oh. like he saw her in in in, in like and it was like a science camp. Weirdness about this or nothing. That was a cute girl. 
That was yeah. a cute girl. Hella, like, really, like, like not like cute as in, like, sexy, but cute Super as in, like, aww. Good. No, like, like, she, she, she was really cute. cute. Like, her, yeah. her, her parents are really gonna have a fucking hard time when she turns when she gets 18. older, yeah. So we finally meet this person, uh, and it's towards the end where a lot of shit's hitting the fan, and there's got, like, the, the, either, either you do something or people are gonna die. They're getting ready to invade this underground Russian bunker that has... <laughs> Uh, a door to the in, to the upside down here in the U.S. and they need like it's codes constantly. to to get into this system to do what they need to do to get rid of the Russians and close the door and all close that shit. Gate. Because they close the and gate, they then the, the mind flare can't they, exist. At the same they, time, the mind flare is attacking the other kids at the mall and actually getting ready to fucking kill them along with alongside with Billy. I'd stay probably a good fucking five, six minutes. They do a fucking scene straight out of Well, let, let's, let's lead up to this. Let's lead up to this. Is, like fucking sound of music and shit. Let's lead up to this because I know I know you have a strong and, opinion and and even the fucking Russians can hear. I'm pissed. <laughs> I fucking hate musical. So I hate them. So what happens is is <laughs> Dustin's trying is he, he's on this radio uh, with his girlfriend and she's like I'll only do it if you sing if you sing the song if you do it if you do the thing. And he's like, I don't want to do the thing. He's there with people, and everyone's on the radio that can hear him. But lo and behold, he starts singing in perfect harmony with her the Never Ending Story theme song. And like, you, like they start singing normally, like there's no music in the background, and the music fades in. And the whole time, I, like this whole time, I'm getting my grin is getting bigger and bigger because of the nostalgia of this fucking movie. And I, I think it just fits. This guy, like, Grizz, Not hated it. fucking show for goddamn musical. <laughs> Do you have hate for musicals, Grizz? Look around. Come on, Grizz. No. <laughs> I hate musicals. It's okay. But it was only a few, it was only like a, I don't know, whatever minutes. And the funny thing is, is after that, they were giving Dustin shit for it. It wasn't like a high school musical from Disney. Where, like, it, it pretended it never fucking happened. Like, were, that was a way of communicating. No, they were fucking with him. He's, like, not even having it. Look at his face. It was so good, and it just added to that nostalgia cake, in my opinion. Being a girl, watching the Goonies, having Sean Austin back in the day, he was, like, you know, posters on the wall kind of person to me. So that was kind of cool with Winona Ryder. She was another poster. Well, I'll, ex- you know, I'll accept. I'll accept the part where Bob died, which broke my heart. Oh, I was so pissed. But yeah. he, but he went out like a fucking champ. He's just standing there. You don't think that he's gonna die, and then psh, they one of those things jumps. Yeah, just, just fucking added up. Which was sad that he died, but you know they might bring him back. Who knows? How he, he got ate alive? Ranger things, you know. No, he got disemboweled. Okay, <laughs> Netflix owns Stranger Things, not Disney. Okay? <laughs> they don't bring shit back from the dead. <laughs> just let me have that one. I don't think we're gonna it see. Just, okay, unless just it's wait. a flashback. Another ten years. Another ten years. He'll jump onto another show. He'll be. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be too old by there was, then. <laughs> but there was a flashback. Remember in season three, there no. was a flashback where he did appear. So of him getting killed again. No, no. I'm talking about when he was sitting next to one of the writer's character when she was all boohoo and sappy about it. Yeah, they did like oh, flashbacks. On, 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 on the couch. Yeah. yeah. When, uh, it was like a when three... Hopper is, 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 you know, trying to find out why she ditched him for her son's fucking science teacher. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm a not going to lie. I'm, I'm a little pissed off that she did that to him. A him. date with Hopper. He turned to alcoholism again because of you. <laughs> One of the things about her character is that she's, she gets obsessed over things. We've seen that in the first season. Okay. She got obsessed over, and people thought she was fucking crazy, especially with the whole, uh, the whole Christmas lights thing. The SOS lights. So that happened. And then, well, this thing with the magnets, of course, she's going to go, go batshit crazy over that too. However, she made a commitment with Hopper and the fact that she let him down, like you could see the heartbreak in that scene on his part. And I I understand. I finished that episode right as I was getting off work, came home and got drunk. Ten watching 
<laughs> drink for him. <laughs> like a, I feel your pain, buddy. No, no, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Winona was in the wrong. She could have called his ass. That's all I'm saying. She could have said, hey, you know, I uh, can't do this date. But instead she forgot yeah, completely okay. about him. Okay, while in her defense, it was still another 10 years or so before they made cell phones that she could afford. True. But she was being obsessed over something. Uh, and the fact that in season three, especially when her and Hopper finally kind of like bond and they and they they like she even admits that she's gonna go out on a real date with him towards the end about 15 minutes before he dies and that point i'm like oh he's dead there's he's no coming back for him the minute they had that romantic spark i'm like no he's dead now the fact that they did it he's in russia yeah russia hand him over putin we want him back (laughs) hand him over (laughs) so we were talking about billy let's get to that now billy has a very really in-depth story and i like the how they told it like we said earlier Elle can kind of get into people's heads she can do she has a lot of different abilities and one of the things is uh she kind of to find him and to kind of get where he was at she kind of had to get into his head and we got to see the backstory of the bully billy the bully Plus, when people say he had daddy issues he had daddy issues now, by was she killed? His dad. Yes, the by dead? His dad. Okay. By his dad. Okay. In front of him. And then he got the shit beat out of him by his old man. When you're possessed by the mind flare, you literally eat and drink like shit. And I'm not kidding. Actual shit. Like cleaning products. Bleach and, and shit. Bleach yeah. and shit. That's not natural. And it basically, it's changing you so you can become part of the mind flare. So, there's a scene where... There's a few scenes where you can kind of see that there's a little humanity left in him, and they talk. But the scene that actually that, that gets you, the scene that's the actual redemption scene, the mind flare is getting ready to kill L, and he steps in front of Takes the kill shot. Every, every spark of his humanity pops out to the fr- forefront scene. right then. And he looks down at L and looks at Max, his younger sister, who's right there, says, I'm sorry, Max. But I'm not gonna let this bastard get you. Takes like 30 more leg spears through the body. That that to me, up to that point, was the saddest thing I had seen in this series. I was teary eyed, like I. But yeah, I was, was. Oh, so was sad. I. I was so happy. Was I. I was so happy to see him redeem himself. Because oh, up yeah. until that point, like we knew that we. I mean, they hinted that there's humanity in this guy. That he's a good person. The last three episodes. Of season three was a real fucking tearjerker. Oh yeah. No, it was. All in all, what would you guys give it as far as like ratings? One to ten. 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 Oh yeah, definitely a ten. This is for you. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Go watch it. It's on Netflix. Netflix, you know what? Golf clap for doing this. Just do us a favor. I know you're really bad about just canceling shit when everyone's interested in it. Don't cancel it. Don't cancel it. Please, God, please, don't fucking sell it to Disney. (laughs) Everything's gonna be sold to Disney. You get Bob will come back with Mickey ears. I'm back. Ha ha. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) Ha ha. Fucking Demi Gorgon will come out and have like a fucking tail and some cotton candy. (laughs) We represent the upside down. The upside down. Oh shit. You guys are not right. So, <laughs> you guys, if you haven't seen it, be sure to watch it. Uh, you know, let us know what you think. Is there something we missed that you want us to tell you that you wish we talked about? I mean, there's so much in this in this show that we can discuss. And give us your your thoughts and opinions on what you think Chapter Four is gonna hold. And the good ones, we'll straight drag your ass onto Discord and we'll talk to you for hours. About. <laughs> we will have a straight <laughs> conversation. <laughs> Because Wild and I have actually done that with a few people watching. Please feel free to leave a comment. So Grizz, before we we end this, you know, there's a number I'm going to have you say that you haven't said in a while. We do have a phone number that you can reach us on and give us your input. Maybe something you want us to talk about. Maybe something you want to talk to us about. And that number is what, Grizz? That number is 559-997-6803. And for those of you that did not pay attention the first time, I'm a nice guy. I'll say it one more time. 559-997-6803.
You can find us on Discord, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitch. We also have new grounds for our listeners out there. We're also on Anchor. I think we're like done. A place to buy our merchandise. Oh yes, yeah, the the merchandise oh. that she's wearing. I want to thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching. We're on episode one seventeen. Next week will be episode one eighteen. We hope to see you then. Uh, one twenty is coming around right around the corner, and that means a big quick. boss episode into the season. Uh, we'll be on our hiatus probably three months or so. We do have a lot of great plans for you. By episode 120, we will know how long we'll be gone, and we'll let you know then. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I want you to stay nerdy. Stay sexy. Always.